call this meeting to order. And uh, I just would like to have the privilege of being able to just um, change the order of the agenda. And I'd like to go on to number three first, if that's possible, through you, Chuck and Mike. That's fine, Mike, right? Fine by me. Okay, with that, um, we'll go on to number three, which is a long range facility planning. And um, I've had conversation with the superintendent on this and rather than going back and forth, uh, this committee has been working. Uh, I know Bobby as a board member and myself along with uh, McLone and um, McBroom and Collier and Sally and Mike, uh, we've got a great update. So Mike Emmett will give us an update so that we can uh, go forward. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, um, we have engaged in a tremendous amount of work uh, looking at the long range uh, future of our facilities, um, specifically our elementary facilities across the district. Um, we engaged with both Colliers International as well as Malone McBroom uh, for a series of phases to take a look at the current buildings that we have um, to assess their condition uh, to also uh, conduct an enrollment study uh, that encompasses a 10 year uh, lookout to see what our enrollment will look like over the course of the next 10 years, um, to develop def uh, preferred options uh, for building and or renovating and consolidating, and then ultimately bringing this project to referendum uh, we're looking at this project being uh, the better part of 10 years. So where we are right now, we looked at a, a series of four phases. Phase one was building enrollment understanding. This phase was in fact completed. Uh, phase two, which we recently completed was option development. Phase three, which is where we kind of left off was refinement of our preferred option. And then the next phase would be phase four, which would be marketing of project uh, beyond uh, prior to and beyond the referendum. So um, with our enrollment study that was presented publicly, um, Weathersfield is really looking at a remarkable level of stability uh, over the course of the next 10 years. Uh, we will largely see our elementary level stay uh, very consistent. And um, with regard to the facilities, we did an assessment of all five elementary schools. And then um, for an idea of what Silas Dean looked like, we also encompassed Silas Dean Middle School um, with regard to the facilities assessment as well. So uh, the five elementary schools, looking at uh, the needs of those uh, schools, we found uh, some very consistent themes. Uh, the buildings were well-maintained, but the buildings were tired. Uh, HVAC upgrades were needed, uh, infrastructure such as roofs, roof replacements were needed at all five schools. Um, we also were looking at exterior masonry repairs and repointing, window replacement, um, and again, a lot of um, issues with electrical service and distribution systems. So um, the rough and tough estimate for repairing the buildings, all five of the elementaries was approximately $31 million. Uh, so we finished up with a variety of scenarios uh, that included uh, a combination of build new, renovate as new, and we also had a scenario that took Charles Wright Elementary School offline at the end of the 10-year project. Uh, one of the things that we looked at uh, as a working group was trying to maximize the efficiency of building and limit the amount of uh, disruption to the uh, student population. Again, we took our um, education from our project over at Weathersfield High School that we did over the course of three plus years in phases, uh, which was extraordinarily challenging. So what we looked at doing in phase two was building two new buildings, building a new Hanmer Elementary School next to the existing Hanmer Elementary School. We looked at building a new Highcrest Elementary School next to the existing uh, Highcrest Elementary School. The existing Hanmer building as it is now would be raised and the fields uh, where we currently have Standish Park would be replicated where the current footprint of Hanmer lies. 
With regard to high crest, high, the existing high crest building would become swing space when we do a renovate as new of uh, Emerson Williams Elementary School, as well as Webb Elementary School. And then down the road at the conclusion of the 10 year plan, we would take uh, Charles Wright offline and redistrict to balance out the numbers across all remaining four, uh, four schools. So at this point in time, we were in the process of um, getting ready to move forward with ed specs. Uh, things got a little tight with regard to the budget and we held off. So that's where we are right now at this point in time. Uh, I can assure you that Sally can speak to the issue of the buildings continuing to need um, work. Um, so the list of uh, facility repairs is still large at this point in time. But um, at this juncture, what I'd be interested in understanding is kind of what the uh, temperature is for me reaching out to Colliers and Malone McBroom to see, you know, about reopening this and kind of moving forward with this. So. You know, Michael, I'd just like to say something. Um, sure. Working with Colliers and McBroom was delightful. And, you know, they, were, they knew their, their business and their formulas. I'm wondering if things have changed because of the pandemic and the way the school could be reconfigured on the interior now. Remember, we were always talking about these thin, thin hallways so we could have bigger um, classrooms. Well, now we may have smaller classrooms in which people go out into to make another group because things are done um, through technology. I mean, there's all kinds of things that may have changed that I'm sure they would know. So they would be very interesting to talk to just on that point. Bobby, just to go along with what your conversation to start, I think there's a whole new picture of what things are going to be looking at. Our enrollment study was done quite a few years. Well, actually, it seems like years ago, but <laughs> that millennial and um, it, there's certainly a, an option to maybe look at that whole thing again, as well as the how the buildings are configured. But I do, um, the reason why we cautioned this project was because of the funding. And because this is, uh, you know, a capital project funding option that has to be placed into the budget not our budget but the town council budget and so we that's where we were and we felt that it was fiscally responsible uh to kind of table it put a pause on it like everything but i i just like to get a handle on the updates of our projects and what's in that two percent reserve so that we could either move forward on it or just kind of not go anywhere and, and I want to second that, John Cassio, because my notes say that we were waiting for $60,000 approval from the town council to go into phase three. It says phase three is in, goes into the budget 2020, and we need 60000 to move forward. And I never found out whatever happened after that. Like you, John, it was paused. So I, we didn't have the 60000 Mike said. And... Did we get that, Mike, from town council to move forward, or how? I mean, my exact notes are: we need to get the sixty thousand for two schools, um, and capital improvement uh, CIP was gone. So I'm asking: where do we go? Did we get sixty thousand for phase three, or did we not? We, uh, when we finished up last fiscal year, we returned to the town uh, monies to cover this year's health insurance. We also had additional funds at the end of the year, um, those remaining funds did go into the 2% reserve. Uh, I can certainly, for the committee, get the actual number of what that 2% reserve sits at right now. Um, the estimate, the cost estimate that we had with regard to uh, the cost of phase three, uh, Colliers puts that out at between 50 and 75,000 for phase three. Yeah, my note said 60, so I'm not sure that's in between. So that's, yeah. um, but did we ever get that money? Did we ever get that money? No, we never had it put in the budget, Elaine. We had okay. talked about it. Right. And then that's, COVID okay. struck. I'm not sure I'm remembering it right. No, that's where we're at. So okay. I had reached out to Mayor Rell about this, and we were in agreement that we were going to talk about it, and that's why we okay. had this meeting. And if there's money, the 2% fund, 
I think we can get the council support to use it or where, as we've said in our um, budget, um, our finance meetings, we're, we're plus 500, we, you know, right now we're under budget, which could change on a daily basis, but there's right. money that we could use to get the next part of this ball rolling. Okay. As well, if we very wanted helpful. to. Very helpful. Cause I don't know all it goes on facilities sometimes. And, and I only have my notes that I took. I have my notebook here. And They're very have, good note doing. <laughs> well, but because our October 8th meeting was totally on uh, facilities update, the hybrid model, reopening plans, updating HV. Sally gave us a full report, but we never went back to our facilities, you know, our school plan, how our schools were gonna. So now we're on December 7th from our last school facilities meeting in February 4th. So I just wanted to know if I missed something in between, you know, that because uh, my notes say we need the 60,000 to move forward. And I guess that's still where we're at. So I'm, I just wanted to be sure I was on the same page as the rest of the team. Well, I think you are, Elaine. I think at the end of the day, there wasn't anyone that objected to this project. Right. Um, and that we, you know, had been working very diligent but I think we were just trying to be fiscally responsible. Right. Now that we've had capital improvements done, I know that a lot of them we stayed under budget. Okay. So I think what we have to do is find out uh, what direction we need to yes. go in. I okay. think that what we need to do, and you know, I, I appreciate um, the fact that we are bringing it back to the table, yes. that we just don't leave it on the shelf. I this agree. is a very totally. critical uh, thing for our community. Absolutely. to move forward on. So Absolutely. with that being said, we, we really need to find out uh, some things. Maybe, you know, we find out what's left in the 2% fund, what exactly it would be the cost for phase three. And um, do we need to do an enrollment study again or a different look at it? Uh, but one other thing I need to just and, put on the table. Go ahead. One Go other ahead. thing is that we are in the middle of a pandemic and a real crisis for our administration, our staff, every, you know, all our workers in all town facilities. Um, these phases were critical. It took a lot of effort and time oh, yeah. of individuals to move it to the table to where we are. So I just wanna put that out there that I, with the daily operations, of what we're doing in Weathersfield, I don't know. We were very fortunate with uh, our superintendent and the administration and Sally to be able to handle it on their own with the ed specs and everything else. We have to look at that venue as well. You know, are we going to be putting more pressure on our administrative team to do some other research? So I just well, want that to be. Honest. Well, I remember us deciding, and maybe I want clarification here from Chuck and John, you too, because you and Bobby, you have been on a long time. I just came on this time. Um, we had the thoughts, the thoughts still was in thought process of going to a referendum. And oh. at one time, Mike, you were suggesting we do two schools. And then I said, I'm not for two schools. We've got to put down the money for four schools at once. I don't want, I think that was, does anybody recall us doing that, saying that all four want, we want to be we, we had to thrown out options that other towns had done. That we had yeah, not but, any, um, but we were worried, like we thought Highcrest needed to be fixed. And then we thought, what if we don't get the funds again for the number school number two? You know, in another I don't think we had, I don't think we ever got that far. I know we all started. I know Bobby and I talked about it informally of like all the variations. Some towns do successive ones. Some go for it all at once. Uh, when I lived in Torrington, we went for a big middle school with everything, and we we lost the first time, got the second time. So I, I'm I'm I have a little you know I know what you're saying, but we never got that far, Elaine. Okay, Chris. I just want to. But here's, you guys have been together longer than me. Well, I know yeah, I came on this time around, so I just John, want to sure. John, thank you for putting again this thing together. I think it is critical. I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I don't think there's any good time to do these things. And I think we have to demonstrate that we can juggle a couple of balls up in the air, even when we're, we're, we're very tested. I know everyone's up to it. My question is, so everything has been completed for the 
second face. There's no outstanding research right. issues with these guys. We're all it's it, it's as if we've paid it off the for the product and now there's another product there for us to buy, right? Correct. And that's going to give us even more meat on the bones, details of our types of, of building options and everything like that to get a real look see at what we're doing. And then if my final question to what um, I'll come back to what Bobby was talking about. I don't think you need to change the architecture because of COVID, because I think there's a lot of, once we go down that path, I think it's, it is problematic, but I think we have to address it and talk it out absolutely and say why we can or cannot. I mean, I'm not saying we can't, but that's certainly gonna be on the minds of people, given the fact that we've had our restrictions in our schools already, which has caused us to do more separation as we all know. So mm -hmm. those are just the two things I wanted to put on the table. And thank you for getting this back on task. I think it's a positive thing for us to work on as a board with the council. And uh, I'm, I'm all for going full speed ahead on it. Uh, just to <laughs> note, there were no architectural renderings of these schools at all. They just talked about size per student and um, you know, do we have the space? And yes, we had the space in all four of those areas. That's all that we got to. We never got to what would these buildings look like. Right. But that's why I say perhaps the timing is a little better. COVID could, I didn't, I didn't say it will, it could change the way some things are done. Just oh, like- Absolutely. And I just think we need to be, I think I, I agree with you, Bobby. I don't disagree with you. I, and I think the sooner we get to that, the better. If we do a study, if we go to phase three, I think if it's okay, we need to kind of keep a steady flow of information going so that people can follow along our thinking and they can give us their input so that if, whatever we come up with at least, and I know John, you're very good at this, getting people's input along the way. So everyone feels they've had a say, they bought into it. They, they may not like it, but they were given every, opportunity to comment on it as we move to the end, because that's the only way we're gonna get enough people to buy into it. I think if they see the process a little bit and understand what the real opportunity here is for the town. I think uh, Chris, to your point also, you know, kind of where we left off is really having the board see what all the scenarios are and really honing in and coming up with, this is the scenario we're gonna right. go with. Let's do the due diligence with regard to this particular scenario. Let's get the word out. Let's right. let's sell it and let's dig in on the ed specs. As to the COVID piece, Bobby, what I see with regard to potential changes with the pandemic would really be in the areas potentially of HVAC. Now, obviously, that was a challenge for us. Uh, it was a challenge at Highcrest and it was a challenge at uh, Hammer. Uh, you know, we dealt with the you know one boiler is currently down at Hammer. The other one went down this morning. So it was a little chilly over there. And you know those boilers, I have to say they are older than me. Um, date back to 1966. Those are the original boilers for that. Boiler. Oh, that's nothing, Mike. Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> you gotta at least be at my age for you to count. And just so they're, they, it, they are both back up. We were able to, to do a repair today. Oh, awesome, excellent. It's, um, a, it's a stop and we can discuss it more. It is a, it's a Band-Aid. I hope you okay. don't have some guy down there handcuffed to the boiler tending all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's coal in. Right. So, okay. So with that being said, I think what we have, you know, if everyone's in agreement, uh, once we can verify, I know Chuck sent everyone a message, what's in the uh, reserve fund, do we want to start pursuing the phase three? Do we want to have our, have Mike get in touch with um, Collier and McLone and have Patrick and Chuck start up again? Yeah, I would, I would love it. Yeah, I, I think it's um, something that takes such a long time anyways. It doesn't just happen in six months. Well, do you need, uh, John, are you looking for us to a sense of this committee to recommend to the full council? I mean, sorry, to the board about it. Is that what you need? Yes. You need, you want a motion for it now? No, we can't make a motion. We just have to, um, I think, come out with an agreement that the, the this study is not going to sit on the shelf and we're going to go into the next phase. Because we already have approval to move it forward. We just paused it because of the finances. Right. That's how I understood it, John, too. 
John, so may I'm, I... saying, I'm saying let's going to continue the investigation or is that that a good word John? <laughs> investigation or process well basically. no we're we're, we're going to look to fund to ask the council to help us find fund the phase yeah. three to move forward to really put this to re-engage on this important project and uh, we will work hand in glove with the council and anyone in the community about this project so that everyone feels they have input and and uh, they can offer ideas and you know we'll just go from there and see what happens i think that's right now the best thing we can do mike you're saying, if you want to say if you want to say as a as it was a you know i always believe you should take motions and have a record but if you don't want to do that it's fine i think maybe we could just leave it at this that the, you john at the next thing you just say was the unanimous and i just don't want to say if everyone's unanimous about it but people say if they do or don't want to move forward and then you can say that was the consensus of the committee and we can put it on as an action item Char chuck thinks that's okay so okay mike chuck, if that's okay i agree yeah, that's fine. we can mike can come up with the language for it sure okay. yep i think what we you know right from the very get-go uh this we wanted to be very transparent with this project and you know we did not want things to just pop up so i think we have to always keep the conversation going and i think the i just don't want people to um think that because things are slow and we're in a pandemic we can move forward on the project that's not it this is for the future of our district so could i make no, a suggestion i agree with you john it's definitely the future and and I was definitely, you know, I've been following along. There's towns who did referendums in November and they passed for yep. new buildings. So, I mean, I it's not unheard too. of. And the mayor and I talked a lot throughout this whole pandemic about this project. So it hasn't been off the radar. It's just discussing a good time when we could re-bring re it up and when, when we could get support for it. So, but I definitely agree. And I want to go slow to go fast, right? We're not in a rush, but we want to get it done right. And Correct. We right. I agree with you. We don't want to put too much taxing things on central office at this time either. So, it, you know, we got to definitely weigh that balance and we'll take Mike's word for it when, it, when it's not enough, when it's too much or if he's do, if they're doing okay and whatever they're being tasked with. But I definitely don't want us to overwhelm central office. I do agree with that. And uh, Chuck, just to that point, you know, we, we have been really methodical in this process. We got this going back in 2018. Um, again, we wanted to make sure that we did our, our due diligence with this. So yeah, I feel very comfortable where we are with the enrollment study. Uh, obviously, I think we're going to have to extrapolate, extrapolate that data out a couple of years, which I think Malone and the room would be able to do. Um, and, and again, I think the idea in terms of us selecting the scenarios, you know, we, we know that our reimbursement rate for a renovation uh, is 57.86%. Our reimbursement rate for new bill is 47.86%. Um, so, you know, we're, we will certainly go to the state. I know Chuck, you and I have a meeting coming up with our elected officials uh, soon. That may be a conversation we can have with, with them as well. And I think the, the balancing it out of the, um, the build new versus the renovation you know, I'm really hopeful that we can build these efficiently. You know, obviously our interest rates right now are really at historic lows. Um, when you look at our uh, project from Weathersfield High School, I think we've hit the peak in terms of the debt service and we're now starting to, to trend downward. Um, and, and again, the idea I think down the road, if we're going from five buildings to four, I think a long-term cost savings there is we're only having to maintain four buildings instead of five. So, you know, we try to approach this from a perspective of, you know, being efficient and, you know, getting more with, with less. And the idea of not having to phase, even with our renovations, to be able to move Emerson students or Webb students out of that location, you are dramatically cutting down the amount of time you're going to need. You completely turn over that, that physical location to the construction company. And you don't have to phase it. You don't have to deal with portables. And the beauty part with Highcrest, we redid the portables. Thank you, Town of Weathersfield. Um, you've got all the space you need to cover both Webb as well as Emerson Williams as swing space. So I, I think we're in a good place right now uh, to move forward and to pick this up. Chuck, I want, um, Chuck, 
uh, I had one suggestion, and this may already be on our website, but John, when we had, we didn't we have a report for, I remember getting a pretty comprehensive, nice report from phase two that they, I think it was the engineers gave us, right? My Correct. Room. And was there one also for stage one? Cause that was probably about four my, I count on the board or, or, or is stage two the first real report they issued? We, there, we have both of them. So maybe as we move forward on this, there's a way we can get both of them on our website so people can see at least what's been done so far. So to show people it's a, you know, we've invested in this process, it's staged, it's deliberate. And, we, you know, we never, it's, it's a public document. So let people have at it, take a yep. look at it. And that'll, I think at least we we're making the effort as we should to provide information whether they want to make whatever they want to make use of. That's yep. fine. That's done. And then we can do the same when phase three gets around. So. Okay. Chris, we were going to do that once we started. We were going to get a, a grassroots committee started with all Good. of that. Perfect. Um, if you want some help. Yeah, yeah, we just haven't gotten to that level yet. All right, no problem. That's good. We're thinking the same way. Just let me know if I can be helpful. That's all. Okay. Hey, John, I think we should be asking for um, the monies for the next part of our project here. I agree. So do we put a request into the town council or is there a way to go about doing it? Um, I think we have to just be, uh, I know Mike Rell is on with us. Uh, maybe we could hear his thoughts, you know, yeah. he has a better snapshot of what the town is facing. Um, right now, I can't tell you what we're facing. Um, you know, it, it's still unknown with our budget situation. Um, we are starting early like we did last year, and, and I appreciate Chuck uh, inviting me to sit in and, and listen to this um, conversation. Uh, not knowing where we are with funding, I, I can't commit to it, but it's definitely on our radar screen. It, it's been on my radar screen since before I, um, you know, took the mayor position. So I, I, you know, I was on council when this started, uh, you know, getting legs. So um, I will talk with Chuck and, uh, and Mike, you make a, a really good point. You're going to be talking to the uh, delegation soon, or at least Carrie Wood and, and um, uh, Amy Bellow soon. So I'll be doing the same thing. We have a meeting scheduled or hopefully scheduled soon with them to um, come up with ideas. Uh, bond money, school construction money, it's always a priority for legislators to get that back to uh, the district. So hopefully we can, um, you know, work with allegation to be able to, to fulfill some of our, you know, requests for, for dollars. But in the meantime, you know, as Elaine said, she pinned it right on the head about $60,000, anywhere from 50 to 75,000 for a phase three. Um, I'll take that to uh, to council into consideration and um, you know see where we can go you know getting phase three done I would like to see that you know maybe at this point where the pandemic has got people possibly looking for work I, I know Chuck said that referendums passed in November so there is school construction going on mm -hmm. but if there are contractors out there that are looking for work, they you know can lower their their bids. That would be great. We can just see. Um, in the meantime, let's let's get that sixty thousand dollars and uh, see where we can go from there. Thank you, Mike. My mayor. Does anyone have any more questions with regards to the long range facility planning? Sally, do you have any input? You've been. Uh, with us on this one as well. Yeah, I think, you know, once you get your phase three done, you then have to give um, very careful consideration for how you want to go out to RFP for an architect. Um, because the only way to be able to get pricing is to have a plan. And so um, that is really where 
um, the rubber is going to meet the road when you start talking about what your vision is for these spaces and what as the clients you are going to be tasking the architect with in that person's design so that it does not, so that the function of the buildings does not take a back seat to the form of the building. And that as the clients, you get what you want from an architectural design, which you can then put out on the street for pricing. Okay. So Mike Emmett, um, sure. we'll have some conversation uh, with regards, you're gonna speak with Matt uh, Kazaka and then do, do we as a board, uh, once we come up with a plan, uh, submit a request to the community, to the town for phase three? Is that how this is done? Yeah, in, in the past, Mike, I think when we've requested monies from, well, it used to be the 1% res reserve, we actually went before council for approval, as I recall. That's how you got this phase two money. You would be asking approval to use the 2% fund, right, Michael? Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay, I think we've got a plan and uh, I'm glad that we started dusting off the phase, the project again. So I think we're, we're on a roll. I'm glad to see it on the um, agenda. I was surprised. Yeah, well, I have to say, uh, again, kudos to both Chuck and to Mike for having the conversation and, you know, understanding the importance of it and getting it back up to the forefront. So I, I'm excited about it. I think it's good, you know, for the future of our district. And again, I think it's a good blueprint on which we can build moving forward. So, uh, and I will obviously reach out to Malone McBroom and I'll reach out to Colliers as well. Uh, to talk about you know the process with them and again i'd like to get some hard and fast figures with regard to what phase three would look like so in terms of cost okay well we can move on to our agenda and we'll go back up to uh well we took attendance so we know who's here and uh so we're all set with that and then we'll get into the facilities and maintenance update all right, so, I'm gonna yeah. so the first thing is talk you guys to are more than welcome to join me in a town council meeting and about your internet's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I heard something about town council. <laughs> yeah, he's gotta go because he has town council meeting. Yeah, I'm the town council. Well, he doesn't have to drive. Yes. You don't you have, have to drive there, there, Mike. Uh, I'm about to get out of there. You couldn't pay me enough to go to exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> Just flip the switch. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right. Go ahead, Sally. We'll see you guys. Okay. Thank you, John. Bye, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you, Mike. Last week, when um, a few weeks back, and I don't know if everyone here knows of this, um, when we started talking and dealing with COVID and ventilation, our current systems could not handle having all of the dampers open and everything open through the winter months. And so we hired an engineer who gave us a short-term plan and a long-term plan. And of course the long-term plan considering the age of our facilities is a replacement plan. In the short term to get us through this winter, uh, he had put together a plan to add glycol to each of the systems that did not already have a glycol system in order to not freeze out any of the pipes while we keep the maximum ventilation in the schools so as to respond to the COVID issues of trying to maximize ventilation and airflow within rooms and hallways throughout the building. One of the caveats to that first plan was that it raises your risk of having leaks. And what we found at Hamner last week was that we have a leak in one of the boilers. So our two boilers in Hamner, they are exceptionally old, they're 55 years old. Um, we did bring in the engineer to take a look at both of them. He has given us uh, a plan for replacing, well, let me rephrase that. 
he he has given us a stepped proposal for replacement of the boilers as far as the engineering goes. And so I have put together a purchase order for $4,200 to be able to hire him and the RZ group that we use of mechanical engineers to design a plan to replace the boilers and hammer. Um, and we will put that out on the street to see what that cost is. I will say that we're looking at six figures. There is no doubt. I have already let the town manager know that as a ballpark, we are looking at six figures. Probably three in the ballpark of $300,000. Was the engineers, and I wanna preface this, that was the engineers give me a back of an envelope what you think um, estimate for replacing the boilers. The burners on the boilers were replaced in 2015. The boilers were installed into the building in 1966. So while they have been meticulously maintained, um, they are far past their useful life. When the boilers were, uh, excuse me, when the burners were replaced in 2015, I believe Fred's hope was that, that you could get another seven to 10 years out of them knowing what the CIP process is like. Uh, oh, sorry. We have done, um, as I said, today we did bring in a company to do the repair. Um, they are, they were unwilling to warranty the repair because of the age of the boilers, but we did find where there was a leak and they have made that repair. So we are keeping our fingers crossed. Um, over the winter break, we are gonna be zoning out that building and trying to figure out why we're losing water in that building, in the, in the boiler system. Um, so that's where we stand with Hamner right now. Um, to give you an update, I did have, I did meet with uh, Mike Emmett and with Gary Evans to talk about CIP projects for next year, because as Mayor Rail had indicated, we have started putting together the, the preliminary items for the budget. The big ticket items for the schools are doing the same type of renovation on the Charles Wright portables as we did on the high crest portables. I did bring out the structural engineer last week over to Charles Wright and her preliminary look through was that um, we would have no problem doing that same type of a renovation on that building as we did at high crest. The same hope would be that we would utilize our own staff and be able to bring it in. Um, we were able to bring in high crest at about $75,000 when it was all said and done. Um, just to let you know, when it comes to CIP, even though we had been given um, almost $200,000 to redo that project, according to Mike O'Neill, that project gets closed out and I will be going asking for new money for Charles Wright. Um, I suspect that it will cost more than Highcrest because of the fact that we are gonna replace the roof. And the roof at the Highcrest portables had already been replaced two years ago. So we did not have to do that work. Um, so I've put in, I think it's a $105,000 project for Charles Wright. Um, as I said, doing the same kind of thing as we did for Highcrest. The, Second item that I put in was replacing the three roofs, the three upper roofs at High Crest. Um, I worked with Tremco, Mike Boudreau from Tremco, and he put out um, Tremco and the town, we belong to a buying collective. And it kind of runs like the state bid list. And he took the three um, upper roofs that have given us the most difficulty at High Crest and went to Silktown Roofing, who was the roofing company we used at the high, at, uh, the high school, who was part of the building consortium, and asked them to price it out. Um, the total cost of that project is about $550,000. <coughs> Excuse me. 
we already have $100,000 in the bank from last year's CIP. And so I've put in uh, the four, the request for 450. I don't know what I'm going to get, but the way that the three um, roofs are, even if I get a portion of that money, I'll be able to do the worst roof. Um, hopefully you'll get more, but I'm not really optimistic about that from what I hear of the total amount of money that's going to be available in the entire budget for CIP projects. Yeah, like, um, just explain to me what you're talking about to get fixed. Okay, I, I, there are, there, are, Highcrest has multiple roofs. Right. There are three upper roofs in the building. The, the middle roof has had significant leaks over the years that have been patched. So that's the like path the media center area? Mm, yeah, the, yeah, the patches can no longer be patched. They really need to replace, we really need to replace that roof. That one roof is about $110,000. And so if I don't get all of the money that I am requesting, we'll at least be able to phase in doing that roof this year and then continue to go after the money for the other roofs. Um, I will say that in a perfect world, I would go to the town council and say, you need to bond for us to be able to do roof replacements on all, on all of our schools, mm -hmm. but the high school. You're our you best know. advertisement for new schools. But, but that's, uh, you know, but those are not very sexy projects and people, you know, unless you're in the school and have to deal with a leak, you don't really think about spending millions of dollars on roofs. Um, and so those were the top two projects I did also put back in again to do the asbestos abatement and flooring at uh, Hanmer and Charles Wright as it had been slated to be done three years ago. Um, also redoing, we have not had any problems with the web stairs, but it was a project that um, was on the list and pretty high up on the list. So that has gone back along with furniture replacements. We've been given no money for furniture over the past 10 years from what I've been able to see. And we need to do furniture replacements. I mean, we got very lucky with COVID in that we literally went out to other school districts and took the furniture that they were replacing um, to put into our schools, which is not really what we want, but it served the purpose. It got us what we needed. Um, but we certainly don't want to be in that situation. Um, hopefully, you know, again, once people understand COVID and vaccinations and getting people vaccinated, I think we'd be able to start to go back to more of the preferred classroom setups for teaching um, and be able to go back to more of a flexible furniture setup in classrooms as we, as we had before. Um, so those are, those are my CIP projects for this upcoming request. Sally, I have two questions for you on those, and thank you. Those were it was well explained. But number one, are we chipping away at that thirty-one million it would cost us to renovate the schools? Is that what we're doing? Um, yes and no. I mean, any of the CIP projects that we do would show up on the larger thirty-one million, but there's no way with our regular maintenance budget that we're actually doing anything but trying to keep up with the issues that pop up. Right. I mean, we get ahead. The other thing is with COVID and right now we have not been reimbursed for, uh, there's been CARES money to be able to buy certain equipment, which has really helped a lot. But when it comes to things like filters and hand sanitizer and all of that stuff, which people keep saying FEMA is going to reimburse us for, so far, we haven't seen a dime. <laughs> and we have spent thousands of dollars on these things. So, um, you know, we're keeping up with it, but keeping up is not making a dent. 
And the, the second question I had for you is, are we redoing the portables at Charles Wright? Because that would be the last school to close. In we're, doing the port, we're doing the portables at Charles Wright because they are in similar, they're a slightly better condition than the high crest portables, but that is space that is needed in the school. Mm -hmm. And so, Again, we don't want to get to the situation, and, and Mike Emmett can talk to this, we don't want to get in the situation that we got into at Highcrest, where the principal was, you know, close to having their, their office in a bathroom <laughs> kind of thing. You know, we want to get out ahead of that. We know that even in the best case scenario, Charles Wright is not going to be closing for three, four, five, six years, if not more. And you're going to need that space. And before it be deteriorates so badly that we can't renovate it, let's you know use our lessons learned from Highcrest and just get it done for a reasonable price and give you two classrooms that you know you can use until such time as you decide to get rid of that building. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Any questions of Sally? Sally, I think you hit the nail on the head with a lot of the um, projects. And uh, I, I, I believe if you don't put them on, you don't ask, you don't get it. But at least we have them on the radar. And I thank you for that. Um, any other facilities updates that we can hear about or see? Are we all set for the snow? Well, I will say we're set for snow. Um, we've been doing a, an exceptional amount of cleaning in the schools, we are uh, being exceptionally diligent when it comes to cleaning on a daily basis and then also the deeper cleaning on uh, during the Wednesdays. Um, so far, um, and again, I'll put my plea out there. So far, um, I've been able to keep my staff at full staff. I don't know as COVID goes on, um, I have a feeling I'm going to get pressure from the town council for layoffs of custodians because they think that because people aren't in the schools as much, they're not needed. And I would vehemently say and have said that that is not accurate. Um, but you know, we're just out there cleaning, and I think we're doing. I think we're doing a really good job of it. People, you know, they're wearing their masks. They're social distancing. They're getting in there. And as soon as we have heard of any positive case, we're on it. We're there. We are, you know, spraying everything down, allowing for the dwell time, making sure it's clean. And I've been really proud of the staff for their response. Sally, just let them know we're really uh, appreciative of all the work that mm -hmm. they're doing. Yeah. It's not an easy job, and uh, we thank you for that. And I will certainly send those wishes along. Yeah, from all of us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is there any other business that members of the committee may want to bring to the table? Ellie, I just want to know what's, are you talking about the stairs at Webb that were crumbling that we fixed? Or is yes. there another set that needs to be fixed? No, that's that set. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, I think we're right on time. And uh, we don't have any other questions or concerns. And uh, we'll bring a quick report to the board tomorrow. And with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? <laughs> Second. Thank you. All thank in favor? You, All right. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for the evening. It was good to good see job, you all. Done. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you.